Hey guys, it's me Lake Sales, and today I've got another video for you. But today, um, as you can see, I'm not wearing a suit, I'm not dressed up, no watch, nothing like that. My hair's a bit of a mess. Well, it's actually Saturday night, 11.54pm, it's about 6 minutes till Sunday. So uh, I decided to do a video, but I decided to do a different one. This one's not going to be um, about any fragrance in particular, in fact this one's just going to be a sort of vlog. Basically, um, my fragrance story, This um, I'm going to basically tell you guys my story of how I get into fragrances. I love hearing other people's stories, I love hearing people tell me, oh and I, I first bought this and I fell in love with this and then I moved on to this. And, my friend wore this and when I sniffed this, oh it smelled like this and blah blah. I love it hearing how people, you know, sniff their fathers aftershave and really liked it and decided what they were on and they got the first proper aftershave for Christmas or a birthday and they got hooked from then on. Well yeah, I like hearing those. So I decided I'll do something different and uh, share mine. So I'm not going to sit today because I'm not basically trying to sell the fragrances to you guys. No, I'm kidding. But, but I mean, I do like to talk my best in my videos and um, when I'm actually presenting them. And then uh, showing them off, but when I'm just talking about them, eh, uh, casual, plus it's 11.55 and I couldn't really be bothered wearing a suit anyway. But, so relief, I'm not doing a fragrance video, I have to say that, yeah. I'm kind of glad though, because I was planning to do one, and what was it, was it, um, was it New Saint Laurent, I'm chatting about one I was going to do. Uh, I was going to do that in another one, it was Armani Sport, but um, I just decided, you know, it's great, I'll do this one instead and take it a bit different. So yeah, let's get started. Well basically for me, um, I wasn't really into fragrances as a kid, I didn't have any high school ones or anything like that. Basically my fragrance started was, um, I started noticing fragrances more when we were going on holiday. My father used to wear Fahrenheit and eventually he started wearing uh, it was Hugo Dark Blue, the aftershave. So I liked those smells because they reminded me of going on holiday. Basically when um, my dad got up in the morning and um, had his shower, got shaved, sprayed on his aftershave, so he splat had the splash on Fahrenheit and things, so he'd splash on his aftershave and leave the house, so when I woke up, I wouldn't really smell it because he'd already gone and stuff, it wouldn't be lingering around. So the only time I really got to smell it was when we were going on holiday because I'd be sitting next to the plane and we'd be driving up in the car or getting in a taxi to the airport and I'd be close to him so I'd sniff it and he'd just apply it as he left the house so I'd sniff it, so that smell of Fahrenheit and the uh, Hugo Dark Blue, they, they, in my mind, linked pleasure, they linked holiday, they linked good times, so already I had a love of, of um, scents and things as, as a child. So basically, close this door a bit, so. Um, so basically like that was it, I mean I, I liked it, so I mean I remember as a kid I used to um, sit in the, I'd unscrew the nozzle and sniff it, I just loved the smell of the Hugo Dark Blue, um, I just, I thought it was awesome, I still I still do like it, I know it's a sort of love-hate thing if you've got, you know, a sleazy, you wear it, I was reading, was it Bass Notes I think it was? So I'm saying you would wear this at some sleazy uh, 90s rave club. <laughs> I thought it was uh, quite amusing. So, uh, yeah, Saturday, so I've got my scotch here, so drink up. Famous grouse, nothing too fancy, but uh, Saturday night, what can you do? <laughs> so basically, like, yeah, I remember I used to, I was so inexperienced, I used to splash it in my hand, and then, uh, you know, apply it here, but uh, sometimes I watched this now as a kid, I would splash it in the palm of my hand and just. And my mum was like, you know, what are you doing? It's great because, you know, you can get away with it. And my mum thought, what are you doing sniffing your hand? I was like, and I've just got an extra nose. <laughs> you know, that's the innocence of being a child. You can get away with that. If I said that nowadays, I'm just, you know, got an extra nose. <laughs> She'd think I was taking cocaine. Like most people, you know, I'm fine. I'll be out in a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. That's the good stuff. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Innocence of being a child. So um, I remember my first my first time I actually wore fragrance. I can't even remember what one it was. My father used to love um, getting these packs, and they were like you know 10, 20 mils and stuff. Just these sort of packs with the miniatures in them, because he liked the fact that he'd sniff more than one. So instead of spending money and getting one scent, he'd spend uh, roughly the same amount of money and get small amounts of each scent. So if he particularly liked a scent, he would go out and buy the full bottle. So uh, yeah, I remember. It was the last day, was it the last day of primary school I think it was? And uh, we just had a nice party in the class and stuff and uh, played games and just chatted, it was great. So basically, I was wearing this one and I loved it and like, uh, I felt there like I was always a kid that was carrying on the class and you know, I didn't have the best grades, I didn't really take school too seriously, which was a really big mistake. <laughs> but anyway, basically I was like carrying on and stuff, but like, um, I sort of just mainly kept to myself and, they, and I liked this because 
I was getting a lot of attention. Oh, you smell nice. Oh, what's that? You'll be know what is this? And it, you know, and it, again, I wore this aftershave and I suddenly getting all this attention. It just increased my love for it even more. And I felt really mature because I, sm I smelled on my father. It was one of my father more. Uh, pardon me. <coughs> Sorry. As long as my father was, so I felt we were growing up and mature. And mum, as I'm leaving the house, is oh, you're just like your dad, a big growing up boy, and I just felt great that day, so that was pretty good. And in high school, I don't really remember having one. I don't know what anyone else wore, in fact, because I wasn't really experienced, if someone wore one, I probably wouldn't remember. I think most of them were sporty ones, you had that splash. Most of them were just linked body spray. That's when I remember that one used to bring in high school, it was just tsk, you know, gym class, you know, it would just reek of. Of Lynx and uh, Adidas, so that was um, it was Lynx Vice. I quite like that one. Someone said Sunny Crocker would wear it. It's very 80s. I quite like Vice because this smells quite 80s and it's gone now. Uh, speaking of Lynx, I remember the one my, my dad and the deodorant my dad used to have. It was the the Voodoo Lynx Voodoo. They don't make it anymore, but it was really really nice and I really liked it. And I know everyone's like, uh, it was going to have Africa, Africa. I think Voodoo was really, really good. As a kid, you know, Voodoo is now one of those scents I, I liked. As well, one of the links. At, oh, to you Americans, Lynx is Axe. It's the same company, different name, just so you guys know. Uh, I call it Axe over here as well, a bad habit of reading stuff on like bass notes and Frigranica. So basically, um, that was my memories with just sports space. I don't, didn't really wear cologne a lot. I sniff a lot back then, but my first experience was I remember I got and um, for Christmas I got Calvin Klein's Crave, and I liked that one. It was a uh, was it 30 mils I think it was I got, but it lasted me ages because I barely wore it, and even when I did, I only wore it three sprays, so I didn't wear too much. I wore, mostly bought in college, and I got um and for my 18th it was I got an Andy Roddick, Andy Roddick um the sporty Andy Roddick one. It wasn't anything too fancy. It was nice. It just your, nowadays it's just a generic sports thing. Back then I thought it was a bee's knees, <laughs> but uh, it was nice. So basically, um, I wore that a lot, and I wore the the, the Calvin Klein. I remember I sprayed the Calvin Klein in class, and it was like, oh, is that crave? Oh, it smells so good. And again, this attention, but the aftershave attention. People asking me to wear that again. It just uh, from flashback of primary school and that. So at that point, I started to think a bit more seriously about aftershave now. Again, uh, I wasn't exactly fond of spending a lot of money, so one that my dad um, pointed me towards, um, he was talking about from back day, was this one here, uh, Brute by Favalgé. Now this is my latest bottle, but I've had this for years, but I actually had this Splash On bottle. I can't remember if it was his or if I had my own one. I think it was his, and it was a Splash On, and I didn't know anything about Splash On or Eau de Cologne or the Toilette, blah, blah, blah. Um, I just presumed Eau de Toilette meant it was a spray. So as an idiot, I didn't know what it meant. I concentrate. I thought if it had a spray, it was an eau de toilette automatically. That was just me being an idiot, but <laughs> you know, eau de toilette, deodorant. <laughs> yeah, but basically, I didn't know it, and so I used to think that the, the splash on would project like a base, and it didn't. But even this one doesn't, as I've said in my video. But it was damn nice. So basically, like, uh, sorry if I'm moving the mouse around. My keys on my screen will go off, and I'll turn dark and look weird, but. I quite like this one, it was nice, it smelled pleasant. Um, didn't really get as much attention as the Calvin Klein, mind you, but I liked it so I was quite happy. So uh, I started to move on, basically I moved on to these ones here after that, because my friend got one of these in Poundland, and my mates. So these were the Umbro, I need to do a video on these, but I don't know when they came out, so the video will now normally put, you know, uh, and taste by Chanel, you know, brackets 1982 or whenever it came out. Uh, this one will just be open brackets and four question marks because I don't know the date. But this is the Umbro uh, Elite series. I've got three, I've got this one, I've got this green one, and I've got a blue one. So basically, when I picked them up all one day, my father got me this one. This is my second bottle of this one. And this is like a, a nicer version of uh, Dupes or Yope. Tell me. Gassy, I had curry early on for dinner, so stomach's out like that, you know, bloated as hell, but feel great. Um, so I probably won't feel great anymore, mind you. <laughs> but anyway, this was the first one I got, and this one already it smells, I mean, I, you know, I always think of wearing, you know, white Sergio Takini track top and, you know, baseball cap, you know, feeler. <laughs> just sitting there, you know, just dressed casually and going out with mates and stuff with like this. This reminds me a lot of, yeah, good memories of this thing. Uh, this this smell of college, but the, this wasn't the one I was looking at. I didn't know which one it was, and my friend was wearing this one, and he wore it in class. He went to the toilet and he came back and he was smelling of this stuff. And I was like, damn, that's amazing. What is that? He said, oh, it's Umbo. Now he didn't know the exact name because he just bought it. Cause it was cheap and it smelled nice. 
but basically this is a total clone of this Jack Anwar. Now I did not have a clue what this was. Remember, this is back. I think this was level five in college. Level five digit media computing. I think it was NQNC. It was NC. And um, basically, um, it was it was a uh, it was level five. I think I must have been eighteen, just turned eighteen, seventeen. No, I was seventeen, just turning eighteen, I believe. I think I turned eighteen just that year. I think. Yeah, it must have been. So basically, I was rocking this. I didn't know when it was when I bought this last year around Christmas. That I sniffed it. and I was like, oh my god, it smells just like this. So that was the. Uh, I fell in love with Jack Anwar even when I didn't even know it. <laughs> but this really got me. So I didn't know what one it was. So I went out and I says to my dad, I goes, listen, dad, you because now he knew about aftershaves. There's this Umbro one. Um, have you heard anything about it? And he was lining up. Uh, but I can pick it up. See, so went at Poundland. He's come back from work and he brought home this one. It wasn't the same one, but I wasn't disappointed. It smelled really nice. So I went out at lunch and I just looked in the shop, the, the town store, and for like two quid I picked up both of these. So I picked up this one and this one. And this one was and still is my least favourite. In fact, this one reminds me of. Let's see. Yes, this one reminds me of the student union because I would go out wearing this one, and uh, the first time I actually wore loads of it, I was absolutely hammered. Like I was drunk off my ass and was rushing. I mean, I literally get the last train home by what two minutes, you know? <laughs> I keep forgetting that I watch one. I'm like, Ugh. I literally got the last train home by like two minutes. I mean, I just otherwise I'd been walking because I didn't have money for a taxi, and my phone was dead that particular night. So I'd have been absolutely screwed. Uh, so I remember that night I, I, I went to get new jeans as well. So I went to get new jeans, and um, I've got absolutely drunk off my ass. Two pounds for a pint, so I was like, yeah, I'm waving this. And the only, like, I woke up and I, I bought the new jeans, but I was that drunk I forgot I bought them the next morning. So I woke up hungover, and I wasn't aware of the fact that it was like 7 a.m. and I had to be up and, like, you know, to get the chain soon. I just woke up, and the first thing I mean was, oh, new jeans, you know, <laughs> and the smell of this from the night before. So this always reminds me of the student union. Not well, good memories, but not the best, you know, when <laughs> I wake up. So they have a bit of memory for me, the Umbro ones were my first own my own aftershave, you know, typical me, I own my first aftershave was it a cheap one pound a bottle. <laughs> you wouldn't expect it, you know, anyone that knows the ones I'm into now wouldn't expect it. So now it comes to when things got more serious. So this was that was level six and level five I started wearing some of them. And uh, basically I got this one. This one I first experienced again, this is why these ones that smells amazing. That's one million. This was the first proper designer fragrance I owned. I'd got this is my first proper on the Calvin Klein um, designer, you know, upmarket sort of one. That's not the classiest brand, but you know, it's not too bad. So I got this and I sniffed this in a nightclub, and I believe this was 2009, 2010. I thought it must have been 2010, 2011, I think. Level six. God, I'm trying to remember. That was back then, and I first sniffed this in a club. It was a new club called uh, Club Oval, and it had just opened in Glasgow. And one of my friends from high school, he was working PR, and he says, listen, you should come check this place out. And I had nothing to do on the Saturday night, so he got me in the guest list, and nipped down with one of my mates, and we just sat and relaxed. And the guy in the toilet say, sprayed this on me, uh, he was going to think, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. He was like, I, I wasn't really too bored at the time, so I was just in the men's room, and he was like, listen, yeah, you want to freshen up? I'm like, oh, I'm not too bored. And he goes, oh, I'll give you something special then. And I was like, okay, sure. So he busted this out. It smells amazing. I mean, and um, the music was playing at the club. It was quite a this particular club. I loved this because it fit in so well. This particular club was quite uh, uh, nice. It's changed a bit now. I'm not sure if it's still open, but it used to be really classy. It used to have a dress code. If you didn't make an effort, you didn't get in. I think most of the people there were wearing suits. The music was good. They had like an old retro room and a new room, and they would have like Michael Jackson stuff in this other room, uh, remix and stuff. It was really good. And a new room with some of the modern music. It was a really good set of music. And um, drink prices weren't too bad. Beer was cold, which is an, uh, certainly something I can't say for some of the other clubs I've been to. But this one was like, I think of this club every time I sniff this because it smelled so nice. And it was probably the first proper long lasting beast mode fragrance I ever sniffed. I was amazed at how long this was lasting. When I woke up the next morning, I could still sniff it. And it was great because it brought back how good the night was. And um, my mate, he had some on as well. And, he was the same, we met up that same day just to talk about how good a night it was the night before because we were kind of drunk and you know, <laughs> beforehand, but you know, it was great. So this was when I sort of fell in love with this and again, 
I didn't know what it was. And my mother says, oh, is this good? After she everyone's talking about it, it's called Millions. I went, oh, do you mean one million? Just because I'd seen it advertised. Yeah, I think that's it. Gold? Yeah, that's the one. So she got me out for Christmas and I unwrapped this and I thought, wow, I, I first amazed at the bottle. I was like, because I, I can't remember. Um, I couldn't, I was a bit drunk, so I couldn't remember exactly what the bottle looks like and the name. So I was like, oh, I think this bottle looks familiar. And the minute I sprayed this, I was like, oh my God, that's it. That's the one that I sniffed at that club. It was great. So, yeah, I love this. And I felt amazing wearing it until I realised that, wait, I am wearing this and I smell amazing, but so does every one in five guys in this city. So I sort of stopped wearing it. As you can see, even though I've had this for ages, it's still, you know, not even half full. I mean, it's about 60 mils or something, just 55, 60 mils. And considering how long I've had this, you know, we well, looked at it this way. This one's 55, 60 mils, but this one, look how empty that is, so. And I wore that a lot, uh, you know, I wore that um, in less time. I, I used more of that in less time than I have of this, so it just goes to show. But basically, this one's less talk about more. So after that, uh, I didn't really want any proper fresh aquatics, like real nice ones, like designer. So I was out at the caravan park with my mother, and I had my one million with me. <laughs> but um, I brought that. Never used it really, I mean, I used sprayed it twice to go to a Chinese place. So where I was stopping off, it was a Morrison's, and then um, well, over there, and I was just looking at the aftershaves I had, mainly because I was bored. Again, I still wasn't really hooked on fragrance, I had that one, that one, the one million was good enough for me. I had that, that fragrance, that classy one, that was good enough for me. And then I seen this, and I noticed the name, like a new Chiruti made some awesome, I was looking at some like 80s, 80s sports gear and stuff in their suits, and Miami Vice, and you know Chiruti and everything, and I, uh, I seen this Chiruti image and I noticed the Chiruti logo and I was like, seven pounds for this hundred mil, so I asked mum can we get this? She went, sure no problem, but you can't open it, so finally I can't open it until I get home. So we got home and I got to open it finally. So I was dying to know what it looks like. One thing that got me was the bottle. This is the coolest bottle I've ever seen. Just look at this spray, I mean that's awesome. But this really got me into the aquatics. This is such a nice fresh scent. I mean I sniffed this, it just smelled Italian. The only diss I had was it isn't the longest lasting fragrance, which annoyed me because I, knew, I was at that point where I thought all aftershaves would last the same, but the one million was a beast. So when I sniffed this, I was a bit disappointed because again, it was Nino Chiruti, it was a more designer make, it wasn't Umbro, it wasn't Brut, you know, it was Nino Chiruti, it was even better than Calvin Klein. So I expected a bit better, so I was really disappointed by that, but the smell was amazing. It was great. I loved it, I wore that really a lot. I mean, you can see how much it's, it's been used. This, I used this a lot more than one million. Um, I just loved the smell. It was great, and it was another one. This was the thing that taught me that you can get fresh scents that are great. So I uh, moved on, and um, I think it was that was it that year, the year after. I was in Spain, and um, it was Sacoma, I think. Was it Sacoma? Was it Salou? Oh, where was it? It wasn't Salou or Sacoma. I'll try and remember the name. I'll try and put it in the description if I remember. You know, edit the name. The place I mentioned was. Well, this place was a gold mine. I know Salou is very expensive for fragrances. I went there this year, sorry, last year, I forgot, 2014. <laughs> last year, and it was oh, it was unbelievable. Like, they were charging like um, 57 euros or something like that for, what was it? 57 euros for like a, a 50 ml bottle of Armani Eau de Nuit. And I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, that's deeper than RRP back home. I might as well buy it back home. And obviously with the, the EU stuff, I couldn't, you can't buy stuff in the duty free. You can take it back because you're not allowed to bring stuff in now, apparently. And um, for some reason, I was told I'm not allowed to, so I was like, okay, I'm screwed. So that was it. I was kind of pissed off with you because I really wanted, I knew how good and how cheap it was at our place. I wish I was more into scents because I got a lot of good stuff. I didn't know as, much, as many scents. I didn't know about Fahrenheit and stuff and Angel Men and Chanel's. Uh, so when I got to that place, it was really good. Um, I sniffed a few of the fragrances, and one that really stuck out was this one. I sniffed Goatee. I sniffed a few other ones, but this one was the buyer. I love this. This is Boss Bottled. And man, this was so good. Again, I know it's a sort of medium scent, but it projected so well in the heat. I mean, I, I used like three sprays of this, and it would last and project all day. So I was like, wow. It was just amazing. The scent, everything. And the one thing that got me about it, one thing I liked the most was the fact that I'd bought it. It wasn't given to me as a gift. It wasn't. I didn't win it in a prize, it wasn't given to me as a gift, you know, it wasn't passed down to me from like someone else owned it and gave it to me, it was mine. I walked into a store, I chose to buy this, you know, and that was when I sort of knew that I was sort of becoming a more, I mean I must have been, I was 19 back then, 
Uh, I think it was 19 going on 20. Uh, yeah, turn 20 when we came back. So that was a sort of um, reminder that I'm starting to become a man and starting to grow up because I smelt like a man. I felt growing up and mature wearing this. I also liked to bottle it. I was in ours in the, the bath. We don't, we don't have a bath in our house. We have a waterproof proof floor in the shower. So you just stand the waterproof floor. So I, I, I hadn't had a bath in like two years since we got I think it, was, it must have been about three years. Something four, no, it must have been about four years, something like that. Good, good while. I haven't had a bath for since we get the waterproof floor put in, so basically I was in the bath in the hotel and it was amazing. <laughs> and I had this sitting on the, the, the shelf, which is probably the worst place to store it with all the, the shower fumes and stuff. It probably degraded this to hell, plus it wasn't exactly the lightest room. It's like the darkest room, so it was quite light, so I, was, I didn't know anything about storing them then, mind you. So I just noticed it says, boss, if you put it here, it's Hugo Boss, but I thought it was so cool. You know, I just thought it was awesome. Plus I get loads of compliments off this, like, uh, I remember, like, even even families that could speak English, I was, you know, walking down the stairs, this family, and they'll be like, oh, da 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 da, oh, nee, um, pa fam, and I'm just like, now, the minute they didn't say that until I walked by, and I was just like, oh, they must be talking about Mike alone. And it was like, I, I didn't ask that, just the way they were talking about it, and they were like, mm, it didn't sound as if I was saying that, it smells horrible, so I was like, oh, and I, I get in the lift, and someone get on the elevator, they are like, oh, someone, someone smells nice, what's that now? And you know, I was, Sunbathing, you know, and it so like you know, come back from breakfast and lie by the pool, and I just overhear some of the conversations. Oh, do you smell that? That smells really nice. And again, the fact that I bought this and I chose this, and other people agreed with my choosing of this, I was like, yeah, I was quite chuffed. This was the best buy ever. The fact it was mine, I bought this. So I was really chuffed, really uh, pleased with this one. As you can see, I've worked a ton. Uh, I love it. It became my signature scent. And got to the point where, no matter what I wore. Everyone would just presume it was Boss. Is that Boss you're wearing? Is that Boss? Because they were just so used to smelling this on me. And I loved it. I felt great wearing it. So, that was it. So I didn't really buy a lot of fragrances. Uh, I started to get back into them later on when I started watching videos from Mark and stuff. And a lot of the fragrance reviews. Uh, I watched a few of them in top 10s. I don't, don't ask how I got on them. I think it was I was googling around. One of my friends, I think, asked me to look at the cheapest place of one million. Oh, I shouldn't have problem. And I found a few of the videos on YouTube just in Google searches. So I, I listened to a few of them and just got a bit hooked and addicted. They were just fun to watch too. I loved listening to, to Al and Mark and uh, Jack Doc and other guys. Um, you know, discussing their videos and just really. They were so confident about it. This is the best bet ever scent. This is the scent that lasts all day. This is this, this is that. This is the best Chanel scent. I get so many compliments with this scent. This scent here is amazing. It smells of this. I love this one. And I just, they, they sold it to me right there. You know, it was like, it was like online sales assistants. That's what it was like. Only they knew their stuff. And I was just like, well, I need to get another scent. So, I went out. And um, I think the first scent, I'm trying to remember what it was. The first scent I got was, I believe, Armani Code. And uh, I thought it was great, but I realised later on it wasn't lasting too long on me. But I did buy it because it was getting good reviews, it lasts all day on my skin, blah blah, all people are saying, so I bought it. And I bought 007, and I thought they were great at the time, but again, I started to move on. I liked them more than quite often, but then I started to step up my game. And, well, I got my first Chanel that year, so I, I bought those fragrances, I believe it was, uh, I started um, college, I think it was like the last week of my holiday, I believe it was the, was it the Sunday, I think it was the Sunday I was in the town, oh sorry it was Saturday, it was Saturday I was in the town with my mate, and I, I, I bought those, I bought the Armani Code 50ml, and 50ml of the 007, and I wore them the Monday, and I quite liked them, but um, I didn't really buy it, I think I bought, I bought Gucci Guillotine Tens. And um, what was the other one I bought? Uh, I think it was a bottle of Mal and stuff like that later on. But again, I, I, I normally I would show the bottles, but I'm always showing the bottles which significantly have a, a strong point of my sort of fragrance adventure, my fragrance story. So the next one up that does have a strong point, you can obviously see with the bottle, is Chanel Allure Bomb Spot Extreme. And this was my first ever Chanel scent. And well, I was in Denham's with my mate, so I'm just in the town and I was in and the women basically sold me this, I didn't plan on buying it, but I thought to myself, you know what, I mean a lot of videos are saying, go to the Chanel and Dior account and they'll hook you up, you'll understand the best one. And this is where it gets interesting, I mean, I sniffed this, so the women sprayed it on me, I mean what she told me, Chanel's last 128 hours, and I'm just like, that's bullshit. <laughs> How do they know that, do people not sure? But I know this one does last long, all extreme, it was pretty damn good. 
although I didn't really appreciate it, it was just to me another fragrance. It was really later on when I got a more experienced nose that I realised how good the scent actually was. So man, it was um, it was really, really just one of those scents that really got me, it was just wow this is great later on. But when I first got this I wasn't too impressed with it, but I was just chuffed that I had my first Chanel. I'd upped my game a bit, my collection was just that much better, so I was quite pleased with this one. It was damn good, I really liked it, so I ended up buying it. So, that was about it. Uh, I sniffed some Dior's that day as well, but I wasn't too impressed. They ran out of tester chips, I got it in tissue, but um, it didn't. I wasn't too impressed. Until I decided one day to go on and watch a few Dior videos. So, it was my graded unit exam, my mock exam for my graded unit. And I done terribly, along with half the class. Uh, um, the exam was written by the SQA, Scottish Qualifications Authority. And they basically wrote the exam terribly. Even the lectures were like, this is ridiculous, this is pathetic. We're not letting you guys do this exam. And they made up their own exam and then sent it to the SQA who approved it. And I sat that exam that they wrote and I got an A in my graded unit. So I was pleased, but before that, I felt like an idiot because I had studied hard and the questions were just so badly written. I mean, it wasn't just me, it was everyone in the class was complaining about it. I mean, even the lecturers. If the lecturer looks at it and goes, that's bad, and writes their own test, and it just goes to show they didn't have a clue what they were doing in SQA. So, I'm not going to lie, I felt pretty bummed up about it. I was pissed off, and I was angry at myself, I was angry at the SQA, I was angry at college. This whole year's been a waste, and I hated it. I felt really pissed off and angry, so I thought, you know what, screw it. I went to Dedham's, up to the Dior counter, and I purchased my first Dior scent ever. And this was Dior Home Intense. I wanted something really long lasting, and I was quite pleased that it's an Eau de Parfum. This was the first Eau de Parfum I owned. So I felt this is that this is that my collection was improving yet again. This is something real high end. This is real quality. So at that point, this is the best scent I owned in my collection, in my opinion, at that time. And my original plan was to get one of these and get. I was going to get Dolce and Gabbana for Rome. Pardon me. But basically, what happened was the woman. Let me sniff this. It wasn't the Dior woman wasn't there. It was actually the Yves Saint Laurent woman. She says, "Look, I'm not too. I don't know much about Dior, but I, I can. But I can help you out. I can." sell you one but I can't really give you all the info about it so basically I had to use my own nose and what I've heard from videos so I loved this at first sniff and bought this. I'd only went, I originally went for the 50 mils because I thought right if I don't like this then well uh, I've not you know wasted and got 100 mils I'm not going to use. So I had that in this, uh, that in my left wrist and this Fahrenheit here in my wrist and I was like wow I just I get the perpetual vibe I thought people were exaggerating but it really this blew me away so I actually got and I sniffed Dolce and Gabbana for Rome and I, and I sniffed this again and I was like no nah, this I want this so I ended up going back and buying this and I thought the woman wanted to punch me because she had to go and get the key again and go and unlock it and go and get the album to help with the tell. I was just like she probably wants to punch me in the face but <laughs> you know so uh, yeah I walked to these two and this this is where the one I don't remember like my dad I, now I told you my dad wore, wore Fahrenheit I didn't know this at the time so basically um, I wasn't. I didn't know what he wore. So uh, yeah, um, I sniffed this and I was like, my God, that's the one my dad used to wear. And it was only then I realised. I asked him, Dad, did you by any chance ever wear Fahrenheit? He was like, Yeah, I did. Oh, I'm amazed you remember that. And I'm like, Well, I didn't. I just bought this and it smelled the exact same, so it felt great. So that one, uh, yeah, this one amazed me as well. How long it lasted. This one, I was like, I woke up and it was still going strong. I'd never had a longer lasting fragrance in my life. I was amazed. So that was a great uh, adventure at Dior, and that's when I started to realise that um, I was missing out a lot of scents. And I could have been rocking these, you know, back when I was rocking, you know, this <laughs> and Chibuti and One Million. I mean, I could have been. I mean, I know Dior Home came out what? I mean, Fahrenheit came out in 1988. I could have rocked that years ago. The the day I really realised I was missing out was actually um, last last summer. Last summer. Um, it was the last day before the holidays. It was a long. It was, um, it was we'd finished college, and I think we had like um, we actually finished early. I think it was a Wednesday we finished, so we had the Thursday, the Friday, and the hot, an early start to the holidays basically instead of ending on the Friday. So I had a few drinks, and I went and got myself some new fragrances. Now one of them was Yope, uh, Yope Home, and the other one was Terry Mugler's Angel. Now this is my my latest bottle of it. I actually used to own the rubber flask, but. I don't have that one anymore, I have this new one. Um, but I originally had the 50ml rubber flask and my god, I was I was blown away. I was absolutely I loved Angel the perfume. I'd sniffed it in other women, I didn't know it was Angel. I didn't know it was Angel until I sniffed this and I was 
I was blown away. This was amazing. I'd like everyone always talks about. I, the reason I got Yope and Angel Man was after I got the awe and Fahrenheit. I really got a real addiction to beast mode, strong, heavy fragrances. So everybody was talking about strong, heavy as dupe, comparing everything to dupe and Angel Man, dupe and Angel Man, dupe and Angel Man. <clears throat> so basically, I was like, wow. I need to get those. So I got duped for like 20 quid. I was like, damn. And that was a flashback as well, because I know people had worn that. So I was like, man. I was like, that's strong. I mean, it was like, I sprayed it like here. And it was like, over here. I was like, damn. But this, this was absolutely amazing. I fell in love with this. I got the pack. I got a little set with this. It was like um, £35, £36, I think it was for this. This 50ml rubber flask. And I got a nice wee bag with it. And I get a uh, hair gel as well, if it's sort of hair shampoo, it was a combination, you can use it shower gel up here. So I used that and I loved the fact, first time I wore it, I had the hair stuff on, it was, hair was smelling angel and damn, I loved it, it was amazing. So this, I realised this came out in the 90s and I'd been missing out and this just blew me away and it was another reason why my fragrance has done, it's just been getting better and better. Whenever I think I've found something, whenever I think I've found something that's unbelievable, something that's the best, something that's top quality, something that's never going to get better something else comes along and just blows my thoughts out of the water. I'll be sitting like, you know, this is the best fragrance ever and then I'll discover something else that came out ten years before this fragrance that I thought was the best ever and it'll be something like this and just, this blew me away. Um, man, this is just nothing but compliments. This is like, wow, I'd never worn it so strong and so thingy in my life. I mean, the fact it's Eau de Toilette as well blew me away because I pardon me, really gassy. It's like Eau de Parfum, really strong. This is Eau de Toilette. How can this compete? But it did, and Yop as well. Yop was like beast. Sorry about that. And I forgot to move the mouse, but I was just like, wow, this was amazing. So, yeah, that was about it. So, ever since then, my freaking story has just been getting more and more and more. And 2014, like I said, I'm trying to move into niche and save up and get more. So, as you can see, I've been trying to get more. I'm focusing mostly on high end designer and niche. So your Chanel's and stuff like that, and uh, I'll still be picking up a few cheapies that I want, like uh, tobacco and stuff like that, a few classic oldies and that, you know, so, but I will be getting, you know, I've got Dior, I bought Dior Rome, and Dior Rome Spot, so I've done those, and um, yeah, I'm probably going to focus on getting uh, Chanel, a Louis Rome Spot original, not because like, only extreme, like I said, and also getting uh, Paul, Mon uh, Paul Monsieur, um, uh, so uh, yeah, that'll be pretty good working the nose, so I was, um, yeah, um, it's been, um, I thought I'd just share this video for a change, because I thought I always do fragrance ones, I never really do ones that I talk about, and I thought I'd just for a change, uh, just be the real Lex, no suit, you know, no no fancy, hey guys, fragrance of the Lex else, this came out in 1985, and this is the finest of the Dior range, and not, not that, just today, just the real deal, no image, no, you know, no, no fancy watch, or suit, anything like that, just the real me. So I just thought it would be something different, and then I thought I'd share my, my fragrance story. So I it's going on a wee bit took so long, I didn't realise it would go on so long. I thought I just, some stuff started coming back, and Emmy's come back as going along, so it's went from 15 minutes to currently 33 minutes and 21 seconds. So yeah guys, that's my story. Uh, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'd love to hear um, all your stories as well, feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, video responses would be greatly appreciated actually. Um, I think these things seem to have a sort of look the person in the eye. You know, once upon a time there was a young man called Lex Els <laughs> in college with his one pound umbro, umbro fragrance, <laughs> feeling classy, <laughs> and his Adidas tracksuit. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, something different for you guys, uh, for all the subscribers not out there, something a bit different. Uh, that, this doesn't mean I'm, I've stopped doing my fragrance with Lex Els, I've still got so many more to do. Plus my top 10 before you die and date sentence and that stuff. So I've got lots planned. Don't think I'm running out of ideas here, guys, because I am not. I've still got those two new Dior, Dior, Dior's to talk about. So look out for those. So I really hope you've enjoyed the story. Um, tell me, hey, your story is a good name. Is a your fragrance? Please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear. If you enjoyed this video, please um, don't forget to like it and, and subscribe it and tell us. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed. I know I've got about 150 subscribers now. Uh, been getting bigger every day, so yeah, I'm hoping to 
get there. <laughs> I've been certainly coming far. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, two or three years ago, like I said, I didn't expect myself to be doing this. I mean, I used to look at all of the advice now. I'm the one giving advice as well as taking it as well. I was like, you know, starting off with, you know, starting from the bomb, you know, <laughs> and now we're here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, came very far, man. I quite got a blog. Everything's going sweet. You know, pass on graded unit. And I, just, I love the fact that pass on graded unit. And the, the best thing is I wore pool water during the graded unit exam. It was the most relaxed exam ever because I had the air conditioning. It was a hot day and I had the cool water. They were wafting as I was doing the exam. It just felt great. So another fragrance memory right there. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and this won't be in the playlist, by the way. It's not part of the fragrance for Lexel series. So you will have to just search it. If you just Google me, Lexels, and then the name of the video, uh, most of my stuff will come up in Google. You know, it's, it's quite easy to find. Or even on YouTube, just search me. But um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this one and I thought I'd do something different. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, have a nice day and please uh, don't forget to share your stories with me. I'd really like to hear them. Thank you for watching, guys.